I'm Stephen McAdams, and I'm the leader of the research theme Music Perception and Cognition at Kermit. Uh, this theme uh, brings together people primarily in the realms of acoustic signal processing and perceptual and cognitive psychology, as well as neuroscience, around uh, what is going on in the brain and uh, in the mind of a listener as they're listening to music, uh, in a performer when they're preparing to play music, in a composer when he or she is uh, creating music. Uh, people involved in this theme uh, come from uh, primarily from the University of Montreal and McGill University uh, in all these areas that I've just mentioned. And uh, some of the kinds of themes that we explore are the perception of the different musical dimensions like pitch and timbre and duration. Uh, there are derivatives in the realm of pitch, you have melody and harmony. In the realm of duration, you have uh, rhythm and meter. Uh, in timbre, you can go off into the possibilities of uh, understanding orchestration and also the development of new sounds with sound synthesis techniques. One of the aims of this area is to uh, give uh, musicians and composers and theorists uh, handles on why it is that uh, musical information is processed as it is in the human brain or the way in which deficits due to brain damage or various kinds of uh, congenital diseases uh, influence positively or negatively uh, musical capabilities. Uh, we also try to understand uh, how people, uh, not only how they perceive, but also how they learn to perceive uh, music, uh, how uh, the brain sort of uh, finds the structures of a given uh, uh, musical culture, growing up in that culture, and how that then uh, affects the uh, actual interpretation of music from other cultures. Uh, this is a uh, links uh, certain aspects of music perception and cognition to the realms of ethnomusicology, for example. Um, in the realm of uh, musical structure perception, uh, we're very much interested in the understanding of uh, formal functions in music. That is, how do you uh, know, for example, whether you're at the, in the middle, the beginning, or at the end of a musical phrase. And we're also interested in what are the brain substrates of uh, musical processing and musical understanding. Uh, a lot of work done both with brain imaging. Uh, Robert Zatori, for example, at the Montreal Neurological Institute is understanding uh, what parts of the brain are involved in various kinds of musical tasks, uh, whether they're listening or performing. Uh, using uh, patients with uh, various neurological problems, uh, Isabel Perez, the University of Montreal, studies uh, both uh, congenital and acquired uh, amusias. Uh, people have problems understanding certain aspects of music and not others, depending on the kind of brain lesion or the kind of uh, problem that they have. Uh, we're also very much interested in the realm of uh, Perception, uh, people working both in physiology and psychology, such as uh, Dan Leviton at the psychology department, or Evan Balaban at the psychology department at McGill University, both of them, uh, working with acousticians who help us prepare complex stimuli uh, for our experiments, such as Philippe de Paul and Gary Scavon uh, in the music technology group at uh, McGill University. Uh, another area, of course, is very important, is the understanding of uh, musical performance. And we have several researchers involved uh, that are interested in not only how do you capture the movement of uh, performers, such as Marcella Wanderley in the music technology group at the Schulich School of Music at McGill, but also Carolyn Palmer, who is trying to understand how do uh, performers uh, program the movements that they make uh, to create uh, an expressive rendition of a musical structure they're trying to uh, perform. Of course, in uh, all these areas, uh, science tries to move towards uh, creating models of what is going on, and we have several people doing important modeling uh, research, such as Gottfried Toussaint in the uh, School of Computer Science at McGill University and Douglas Eck in the uh, Département d'Informatique at the Université de Montréal. Uh, in addition to these areas, uh, of course, it's very important to understand how these can be applied to uh, various other themes. And so this particular theme uh, has important interactions with the, the immersive systems group uh, to try to understand what are the perceptual implications of broadband transmission of multimodal content. They have links with the uh, uh, motion capture groups for musical performance, and of course, very important links with the uh, uh, sound modeling and acoustics uh, group uh, at Kermit uh, when it concerns uh, the various aspects of a signal that give rise to the dimensions that we perceive, such as uh, pitch, timbre, and uh, intensity and duration. Uh, another problem that uh, is of particular interest to us is the way that people actually represent uh, the color of sounds in their own mind and. Uh, we do a lot of work around the timbre perception, how that might uh, apply to uh, orchestration techniques, for example, or the way that musicians communicate with one another. 
I work in my own laboratory on timbre perception, but also I work in the laboratory of Caroline Trop at the University of Montreal in the Faculty of Music, trying to understand how it is that people sort of communicate uh, sound quality to one another and use that in their own mental representation of the sounds they're trying to produce uh, when they're making expressive uh, gestures in music. Uh, there are very close uh, collaborations as well in the realm of uh, sort of developing perceptual techniques for uh, various kinds of uh, uh, professionals such as sound recording engineers. Um, uh, Rene Canel, for example, works uh, on uh, areas that are trying to understand uh, how can you train people to do very fine-grained fine listening uh, when they're doing sound recording uh, techniques and also to recognize where there are problems that need to be adjusted uh, uh, when they're trying to do uh, very fine-grained editing. Uh, in a slightly more technological realm, uh, there are several members of this uh, theme that are interested in the uses of uh, virtual reality techniques for exploring uh, the role of action and perception and their interaction uh, in musical situations. Uh, Catherine Guastavino in the uh, uh, Graduate School for Information Science uh, here at McGill and uh, people in my own laboratory are very much interested in these problems as well. Uh, one example of a particularly promising research project that brings together people from different disciplines within this research theme is a project being uh, developed currently by uh, Robert Satori at the Montreal Neurological Institute and Marcelo Wanderley at the uh, Music Technology Group here at McGill University. Uh, they're very much interested in trying to adapt musical instruments to be used in the uh, uh, fMRI scanner so that you can actually see what's going on in the brain of a performing musician as they are playing music. Uh, the problem with fMRI scanners is they have very strong magnetic fields and most of the musical instruments uh, that performers use today uh, have ferrous magnetic components and so they cannot be uh, used uh, in those uh, scanners. So Marcelo Wanderley is helping uh, to develop uh, instruments that can actually be played in the scanner by musicians, for example a wind kind of instrument, a string kind of instrument, and a keyboard type of instrument.